Hey everyone, Shrikant here and today we are talking about Valentine DSOs. Now, happy Valentine's Day everybody and Valentine's Day, if you are not familiar with it, is a day when we show our friends how much we care about them. But, there are also many deep sky objects that look like objects that you'll find in Valentine's Day like hearts and angels. So today I've put together a collection of deep sky objects that, that are fitting under this theme. The first one. That's this, the Heart Nebula. Now, the Heart Nebula gets its name because, well, it kind of looks like a heart. But it's not like your classical heart, it's, it's little asymmetrical. But the Heart Nebula and the Soul Nebula are two nebula found in between Cassiopeia and Perseus. I'm sure I already showed you Perseus in my constellation video. And so the Heart Nebula has a star cluster in the middle. And also it has this nebula called the Fish Head Nebula. Now, this is what we call the cluster associated with nebulosity. The, it means that it's basically like a young open star cluster surrounded by gas and dust or a star cluster that is surrounded by gas and dust. So this is how you can find it. The heart nebula is basically he located in between Cassiopeia, that's this W constellation right here, and then Perseus, that's right here. Now, if you look closely in between these two constellations, you will see these two. Now, the Soul Nebula is kind of in Perseus, but the Heart Nebula, many people say it's in Cassiopeia, but it's kind of in the gap. Although it is more towards Cassiopeia than towards Perseus. So we can say that it's kind of part of Cassiopeia. Now, if you want to see this object, I'm sorry to say that it's extremely dim. Unless you have a good telescope or do not live in a light polluted environment, which I have neither, you cannot see this object. Now. Oh, well, that is a disappointment. But the next one is also disappointing because when when you look at this object, these are interacting galaxies. Now, interacting galaxies are, are basically galaxies that are colliding with each other. And why does this happen? Well, because galaxies have gravity of their own. And they can use that gravity to make other galaxies destroy, to destroy other galaxies and take away all the stars and gas from them. N now, there are two types of interacting galaxies. The first type is where a small dwarf galaxy is being eaten up by a bigger galaxy. This is the case for the Whirlpool galaxy and even our own Milky Way is doing this to one of its dwarf galaxies. The other type, that's all these three, is basically when two similarly sized galaxies are colliding to form a bigger galaxy. The first one here is known as the Antennae Galaxy. The Antennae Galaxy gets its name from these two tidal tails that come as the two galaxies collide that look like the antennae of an insect. And it's also sometimes called Winged Tail Galaxy or Snorter. And it's in the constellation of Corvus near Hydra. The next one is in the constellation of Virgo and this one is known as the Siamese Twins, also sometimes called the Fish and Chips Galaxy. The Fish and Chips Galaxy has a very pronounced spiral structure for both galaxies, although there is a place where they are colliding. And then the other one also has very warped spiral structure like this one, they are known as the Mice Galaxies, again just like the Antennae Galaxies. They get their name because of the tidal tails that look like the tail of a mice. Now, why are these two galaxies warped? That is because as the collision progresses, basically what happens is that the galaxies lose some of their spiral structure. And this doesn't even look like a spiral galaxy, although it once probably did. So then, these galaxies will merge into one big galaxy, probably an elliptical galaxy, and that will happen to all these three. Even our Milky Way is predicted to collide with a galaxy nearby known as the Andromeda Galaxy. It might look something sort of like this. And then they'll form a big galaxy called Milk Dromeda, which is an elliptical galaxy. The next one is the heart-shaped cluster. Now, I don't understand how this is called a heart-shaped cluster, but I think it's because the cusp is here. So this one has a magnitude of 5.90 or 5.9, which means that you can see it with big binoculars, which I have. 
have so I can see it. And it's located in the constellation of Omega, the Charioteer. Now, Omega, the Charioteer, will basically have a star named Capella. Capella is the brightest in star in the constellation. And this is how the cluster looks like. You, there'll be other clusters like the Pinwheel Cluster and other stuff like that that you can find. Then the next one, sorry, the next one is the Angel Nebula. Now, one of the coolest things about this nebula is that there are actually three nebula called the Angel Nebula. But most of the time when we say Angel Nebula or Snow Angel Nebula, we mean this one. This one is a hourglass shaped nebula and it gets its name from the tiny star in the middle that's causing humongous lots of radiation and this radiation causes the nebula to glow. This one is the most popular among the three. Then the other ones, I don't know how this one's called the Angel Nebula, because, but I think it's because of this. But this one consists of Reflection Nebula, the dark part is known as Dark Nebula, and then there's also Emission Nebula. Now the last one, and probably my favorite, is this one. This one kind of looks like the Angel Nebula. This is the body, and if you look closely, you can see the head, and then there are wings. So this is the Angel Nebula, and this was actually not gotten from Stellarium like I got the other pictures. This, is, this was gotten by secularastronomy.com. I have a video of that. Now, the last picture, that's this one, is this is the copyright. Now, I got most of them from Stellarium. And happy Valentine's Day, everyone. This is Shrikant, signing up.